Today is uh, Thursday, July 18th, 2024. I'm looking at Matthew, which we've been doing every day this week. Chapter 20, verse 25 through 28. But Jesus called them to himself and said, Do you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them? Yet it shall not be so among you. If you're claiming to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you're not going to live like that. Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And then in Galatians 5.13, where it says that God's called us to liberty, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but by love serve one another. And that scripture and a few others in Galatians 5, 13 and on in the message paraphrase version of scripture, it is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence, love others as you love yourselves. That is an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you'll be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? So we know that Christ's call to us is to love others like we love ourselves. And we know that Christ said, be like me, and I didn't come to be served, but to serve. And so I'm going to encourage you again today that you and I need to live beyond our little worlds, all our little family, all the troubles, struggles, trials, tribulations, all the stuff we're dealing with. And by love, learn to serve one another. I think first to the household of faith, but then I think what we ignore a lot is to the world around us, the people we know, the neighborhood we live in, the place where we work. Extended family, people that are our enemies. And when we choose to do this consistently, the result is going to be a level of life that brings the highest fulfillment and greatest significance we'll ever know. So we talked the last two days about overcoming obstacles, and I just talked about two. There's undoubtedly more, but first one, who's Lord of your life? Who's the boss of you? And when we become believers, we're to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow Jesus. He's to be Lord, commander in chief of our life. And the second obstacle is all these excuses. And we make them all, we make every one of them. So I, I wanna, I, I told you when we finished yesterday, let's live at a, a level of passionate service. So we have examples of this throughout the word. Until we move the passion we'll probably never do more than casual work in God's kingdom. And casual work just doesn't bring the fulfillment God desires you and I to have. Because we lack passion, most of the time we also lack productivity. And Greg Cooper shares the following story, and I quote, a man once went in search of God. He went to a wise old sage and asked if he could help him find God. And the old man told the young man to follow him. And the old man led him down to the river and out until in the river until they were neck deep in the water. And the old man turned, grabbed the young man, and held his head under the water. And the young man twisted and turned and thrashed about. And finally, the old man let go of the young man and said, when you have the passion to find God as you did to find air, then you'll find him. What is it that excites you? that causes your heart to pound, your blood to race, and your spirit to soar. Nothing will move you from potential to productive until you are moved from passive to passionate. Jeremiah was passionate. And I'll quote from Jeremiah 20, verse 9, that says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary of holding back and I could not. He got taken over by that passion. Nehemiah was passionate. Chapter six, verse three of Nehemiah. So I sent messes, messengers to them saying, 
I'm doing a great work, so I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? He was passionate about what God had given him an assignment to do, and he wasn't backing off of it. Paul was passionate. And and we find it in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him referring to Jesus and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. We have more examples. There's not time for me in a short devotional to cover those. Martha Berry was a, la- was a lady with a vision to help ch- children. She began a school for poor children. She had no books, she had no building, and she had no money. Interesting, because she had passion to serve. Man, this is so huge. But she had this dream. She went to Henry Ford to ask for a donation. And Mr. Ford reached into his pocket and gave Martha Berry a dime. Most people would have been insulted. Here he is a multimillionaire and all he could give was a dime. But Martha took that dime, bought a packet of seeds, planted a garden, raised a crop, sold it, and bought more seeds. After three or four harvests, she had enough money to purchase an old building for the children. She returned to Mr. Ford and said, look what your dime has done. <laughs> she was, he was so impressed that he donated a million dollars to Barry School. I want you to see through God's eyes today. He made you unique and designed you for fulfillment. Not for frustration and not for complacency and not for comfortability. The fulfillment he planned for you can be obtained just like Christ obtained his. And I read this out of Mark 10, 45. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Although you and I cannot give our life as a ransom in the same way that Christ did for us, we can give away our lives so that others can move to true discipleship in Jesus Christ. Are you willing to do so? Have you learned to serve others and move out of your little world? Pray with me, Father. We need your help. We want to be obedient, but sometimes our flesh just screams so loud and we're saying, I'm tired or I've got some other excuse or I don't want you to be Lord anymore. We are broken before you today. I want to be like Jesus, just like him. Help me to be so. And help those who who listen, may the Holy Spirit burn a new fire in them, a passion in them to serve. Thank you. Amen. Let's go serve one another. Let's go serve even our enemies. God bless you as you respond to the Holy Spirit today. Have a great day.